Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael, and I am here from the UCD Smurfit uh, Careers Network. Uh, my role here this afternoon is to discuss a few points around, well, what it is that the service provides for our Smurfit students every year, and maybe talk through a little bit of how we see how that works and how it supports you. And probably more interestingly, then we'll have an opportunity to talk to some of our alumni, right? alumni who've been through everything here at Smurfit, and they will have the, the benefit, I suppose, of listening to some of your questions. So it's very important that uh, as we go through the session here this afternoon, all questions should be put through the Q&A function. All right, so uh, questions, please, through Q&A, and we'll address them as we go. Um, or at the end, we, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and so, as I said, the alumni are here to kind of provide some sort of a guide, almost, or in a sense, maybe a, a model of how to uh, use your time at Smurfit to the best of your benefit, right? So that's the purpose of the alumni panel. So that'll be coming up shortly. But first things first, um, what is, I suppose, the service here at UCD Smurf and how maybe it differs from other institutions, uh, particularly at postgraduate business level? So in Ireland, um, uh, we are probably the, in a new position to be the only postgraduate business school that has a dedicated career service. Um, quite a lot are shared uh, services. Uh, we have a small team, but a dedicated team here at UCD Smurfit. Um, and we would see uh, at the moment how we're supporting our students would be in reaction to how the market is. And the market at the moment, as we can see from this COVID reality that we're in, uh, is involved around, well, how is it working from virtually? Right? The whole space around working virtually, how supports are provided virtually, and the whole idea of working from home is really, you know, I suppose, ubiquitous in all places at this moment in time. So we currently would have students based all over the world, but they still are able to access the services here at UCD Smurfit. Who knows where we'll be in September 21, um, but for the moment, as I say, we have a service in the careers that provides for both, for in-campus, uh, rather on-campus, in-person, and also for virtual. And our four-stage approach, uh, it's a professional skills development program that we invite all our students to participate in, uh, right from the get-go. Uh, starts, I suppose, if we were to look at it from a linear perspective, uh, we would provide supports around, well, what is it about your own self-development, right? What is it about knowing yourself? We see a lot of employers today looking for graduates that are very self-aware. Right? It's a key it's a key um, strength that students today need to have, and particularly when it comes to interview. Knowing yourself, knowing your strengths, knowing your personality, uh, knowing your ability. So these are ways that you need to position yourselves uh, as candidates to ensure you land that job. Uh, the second strand then uh, we would look at uh, helping students and support students on would be understanding the market. Right? So it's not just about understanding yourself, but understanding, you know, those around you. And for example, alumni are one way that we uh, suggest that our current students engage with the market, and hence why we have some alumni along here today. But also perhaps through understanding, well, what is it, what, are the, what is the role that I am suited to, and understanding, well, where is that industry going, right? So we have quite a number of tools that would help people to understand, well, what is the market and where am I, where is my fit within that, be it in the Irish market, or the international market. Um, we do an incoming student survey every year. And we uh, find out, we'll ask our students some questions and say, well, where do they want to work? Um, for example, would be one of those questions. And over 80% of students want to stay in Ireland and work here. Um, so this is a key focus for us, understanding the Irish market. And there are quite a number of tools of how we support students in that knowledge um, and seeking that knowledge. Uh, of course, then there are tools for those 20% who want to work overseas. We also support those students. Um, we have online tools, for example, that would allow people to understand, for example, what it is to work in San Francisco, Shanghai. All right. So we have tools that allow you to speak to global career experts in those locations. All right. So that is understanding the market. Uh, the third stage of a professional skills development program all right, so it's the first two potentially we're looking at, you know, inward and looking at yourself, exploratory. Second stage would be exploring your environment. So it's also exploratory. Uh, but the third and fourth, the, the, the third section would be 
uh, stage rather would be about writing your story. So now it's coming to um, fine tuning all of that knowledge that you've brought together and understanding well what it is your story. What is your story? Being able to write your story. And then the last one then would be about telling your story. All right. So there's a distinction here. And uh, we believe that writing your story probably helps if it, that we put that first. And we look at, you know, when it comes to writing your story, it's about telling your uh, CV story, right? Being able to, in a very short space, even one page, being able to tell how you're a good fit for a particular role. Right? And that is a skill, being able to write your story uh, and also tailoring it to a particular uh, job that you're applying for. So there's quite a, there's quite a lot of um, skill in being able to be able to position yourself on a, a written one page document so that you're the best fit for the role. Right? Secondly, of course, everywhere nowadays, um, all, most recruitment happens online. So we're looking at things, like, of course, LinkedIn would be the primary tool. And we would see LinkedIn naturally as an extension of your CV. CV can be the, uh, the targeted, um, tailored document for one particular role, but the CV then, oh, sorry, the LinkedIn profile can be the, the sector or the industry focused uh, document that I suppose gives more information about you that employers would like to learn, all right? So it's a wider piece. Um, so there are, there's two elements about writing your story. And we, we put those first uh, before telling your story because sometimes we need to know what our stories are before we come to practice to tell them. And that is basically an interview or perhaps doing um, informational interviews with alumni, with uh, employees of organizations. Um, so the premise here being when you go to speak to somebody and particularly in the day and age we're in at the moment, uh, those conversations are crucial in terms of landing that job, right? So, how to tell your story effectively. And that is around interview skills. Uh, we have situations nowadays where many employers, particularly at graduate level, are looking at uh, recruiting students through the medium of recorded interviews. So we have a tool that allows you to practice interviews and gives you feedback. And we also give you feedback on that too. In many cases today, feedback is at a premium. Recruiters are very busy. So getting that feedback uh, and helping you improve this skill of telling your story uh, is part and parcel of what it is to be um, part of the career support here at UCD Smurfit. So I've just spent some time there going through the four, what we would say, the four stages of a professional skills development program. For those of you who join us uh, in September, we'd be delighted to, uh, I suppose, in some shape or form, expand on that and show you how you can uh, maximize your opportunity here at UCD Smurfit. Of course, many of you will come looking to do an academic program, but ultimately, uh, you know, the objective will be to try and find that job once your academic uh, sojourn here with us at UCD Smurfit is over. Okay, so uh, that has brought to conclusion uh, the first part of this session here this afternoon. As I said, uh, this was just a quick overview of the supports and services uh, that we provide. Uh, we provide a lot of this, as I said, virtually because men, most of these tools nowadays are, uh, you know, they're based on online platforms. So they're equally available to students all day, all any time of the day and anywhere in the world. So this is the, I suppose, the high tech approach that comes from uh, what we try to provide here for our students at UCD Smurfit Careers. Okay, now the more interesting bit. Right. I'm going to invite our alumni to uh, come and we will start a panel discussion around two, probably two focus points really. One is, uh, you know, your experience as alumni uh, when you were students here at UCD Smurfit. And, you know, also then uh, following on from that, uh, perhaps then perhaps how that has, might have influenced your career and where you are today and how perhaps you can maybe join the two. Um, because we've supposed that the, this particular time that you spend with us has been influential in where you are today. Um, so, without further ado, uh, I'm going to start to introduce, right, so we have Rebecca, we have from uh, the 2015 class, is that correct? Yeah. And we have Chubam and Eric from the 2019 cohorts. And uh, so welcome here this afternoon, thank you for joining us. Perhaps maybe uh, just introduce yourselves very briefly first off, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, 
So Rebecca, uh, as the senior person here today, <laughs> you go first. Um, thanks for outing me, Michael. Um, so I'm older than the two lads, as it turns out. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Fitzgerald, and I'm the senior brand manager for a brand called Kineshka. Um, so I work in the sports nutrition space. Um, and I think that's enough of an intro, Michael, for the moment. Yep, that's yeah. it. Cool. Right, what program did you study? Sorry, did you say? I was in the marketing development program. Marketing. Okay, good. Uh, Shubham, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Shubham. I'm currently working as a growth consultant with HubSpot. 2019 Smurfit was the year I did international business. Uh, yeah, that, that's me. Very good. Cool. And Eric. So hello from Germany. My name is Eric Obendorfer and I graduated in 2019 uh, with an MSc in digital innovation. And I'm currently working as a digital strategy consultant at Datacon International. That's a consultancy company and subsidiary of Deutsche Telekom uh, with headquarters in Cologne, Germany. Ah, so you are in Cologne? Yeah, today. correct, yeah. <laughs> and is it snowy with you? It's not snowing, but it's pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, in Ireland here at the moment, it's, there's a slight threat of snow, but we'll, we'll see what, what happens. Um, so Sh Shabam, how are you today? Very well, very well. Uh, good Where day. I, I am in Dublin right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yes. Rebecca? I'm also in Dublin. Okay, okay. So you're outnumbered, Eric. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose uh, maybe cast your minds back to the, the times of when you were trying to make a decision on, you know, why did you choose Smurfit? Maybe let's, let's start with that one then. Um, so Shabam, I'll let you go first this time. Perfect. Uh, well, uh, you know, I basically came from India and when I was doing my research, uh, there, there was an inclination towards coming to Ireland to study. And, uh, you know, Ireland masters looked that up for on, on any, any search and the fir first name that pops up is UCD. Uh, and, and that was the reputation of, of the university as a whole was one of the key factors for me to decide that. But the other thing which made a huge difference for me in my decision-making process was the kind of diversity that UCD had. Uh, when, I, when I looked at the program year on year at Smurfit, I, I did international business, which had about 14 or 15 different nationalities being represented. UCD as a whole, Smurfit as a whole, I think had 52 plus nationalities in the year that I was there. And that, uh, you know, was, was one of the driving factors for me to get there. Because if I, if I think of it, most people don't get to work with 14 different nationalities in a lifetime. And you get that opportunity in one year. So yeah, that was the selling point for me, at least. Very good. And uh, I presume you got to meet quite a bunch of them while you were here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I am so sorry. It's okay. I'm so sorry. That was a work call. I'll take that later. <laughs> but uh, yes, I did. And that was the beauty of it because I uh, just, just the way the class was and the way uh, the course was designed, I got an opportunity to work with at least 14 to 15 different nationalities, made some great friendships. And uh, yeah, still date, till date, I, I, have, I have friends uh, from countries which I would never otherwise get an opportunity to meet. Very good. Okay, Eric. So what was your driving motivation to move over to Dublin? Yeah, so, so I think I chose Smurfit for many different reasons. So firstly, I would say the MSc in Digital Innovation was pretty unique at that time in Europe. Uh, so almost unique, I would say. Um, without going too much in the, into detail, it's an interdisciplinary program. So it has influences from social sciences, from business, from computer science. So uh, it's suitable for, for students from different uh, um, backgrounds. So for example, uh, students with a background in business like myself, they get a deeper understanding for technologies. And that was exactly what I was looking for at that time. Then uh, secondly, and I think uh, Shabam, you already mentioned that, so UCD is a very well-reputated university, um, especially when you apply for jobs in, in Dublin, recruiters know about UCD and know about its uh, quality in teaching and its high standards. And maybe, yeah, last but not least, I always wanted to study abroad. 
And at the time I had to make my decision, I had been several times to Dublin and Ireland. And yeah, I just got the impression that I could get along really, really, really well with the Irish. So we all know the Irish are a good crack and um, yeah, that the culture in general would, would suit me. And Eric, I presume you probably had other destinations uh, in mind before you made your final choice. What do you think swung it for us? Um, so I'm not too sure about that. So definitely I wanted to study um, or improve my English. So um, it was a, so Ireland was probably a natural choice uh, because of the English, uh, like, uh, English language. But um, yeah, I think it's the combination of uh, the reputation, the country, everything. So like the package was very good. And the Guinness, of course. And the Guinness, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> of course. And Rebecca, what uh, what made you do and join the MDP and let's Murph it? Yeah, so um, it's actually really interesting to hear the, the two guys say that the reputi- reputation was, was something that made them make the choice or part of the reason they made their choices because for sure that was the big thing for me. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm Irish compared to the two guys, and I'd always grown up knowing that Smurfish had this amazing reputation for, um, I suppose, securing the types of jobs that you want to get if you, I, I'm personally, I'm quite an ambitious person, so um, it was definitely going to be the right choice for me, and actually, I was almost nervous that I wouldn't get in because of the, the standard of the, of the school, um, and I'd actually gone from law in UCD, so I was a UCD alumni from a bachelor perspective. Um, and I'd gone away to the States and in my mind, I always thought I was probably going to go abroad again. So I wanted to go to, um, I suppose, a, a, and the master's program was very unique as well to Eric's point around what he was doing. The marketing practice of the marketing development program was quite a unique course as well. And um, so for me, I wanted to make sure that whatever I went into and um, that potentially if I did want to go abroad again, that it would be recognized. So those were some of the key factors for me. Very good. And um, so in terms of other programs, what other programs did you have in mind? Or was it always just MDP or how did you choose the MDP specifically? Because of course at SmartFit, there's such a, an array of programs to choose from. Um, I think it was, there was a number of things really. It wasn't because you at the time had to wear suits to college. That was definitely <laughs> not the reason. Because everyone laughed at us when we did that. No, it was really because, um, I had done four years of law. I'd worked in it for a year over in the States. And it wasn't until I was working in it that I realized I'm going to be working for so many years. I don't love what I'm doing. And I really want to make sure whatever my next step is that I don't have to wait until I'm in a job to realize that I don't love it. And that's what the marketing practice offers, I suppose, in that sense is that it's practical work. So you're working for clients, you're working for organizations, and you get that on the ground feel very quickly as to what you like to do and and potentially what you don't like to do. So for me, that was the biggest draw was, I don't want to waste any more time trying to figure out what I like. Let's get into it straight away, come out with a great um, master's and a great result, um, and hopefully have a really good direction from there as to what I would love to to do. Um, So that was was definitely the the, the big pull for me. A springboard, as it were. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, I mean, the <clears throat> MDP, from what I know of it, and I've uh, been chatting to students over there, yeah, they, they work you uh, pretty pretty well, don't they? They do. They do indeed. But th- do you know what? That's, that's probably one of the best things that I got from it is my work ethic, because it was something that, um, well, I think you, you figure out very quickly, like there was a lot of people in my course who didn't necessarily stay in marketing because it's such a broad, you get such broad exposure to different functions because you're working for clients and organizations. Um, but your work ethic is, it doesn't matter where you end up, you get an unbelievable work ethic from it. Um, so yeah, they, they work you hard, but it's, it's worth it. Good. So that's, that's one thing you, you can point to that you got from, from taking on the, the Smartfit Masters then. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else that surprised you about the program? Yeah, I mean, from, from start to finish, I think I was surprised every day. It's got a reputation for, um, I suppose, giving you opportunities to think on your feet. Um, so without giving too much away about the program, uh, at the start, even your initiation phase into the course, um, you have like a two week induction or whatever. And I was really nervous going in because I, first of all, really wanted to do well. But um, I had, I suppose, a case of like imposter syndrome because 
in my mind, I was thinking, oh my God, I've never studied business. I don't know any of the acronyms. I don't know anything about anything. How am I going to go up against people who have studied commerce for three years or whatever it was? And so I think it actually put me in a situation where I'm happy being uncomfortable, uh, which probably sounds strange, but for me, I know if I'm in a, an uncomfortable situation, I'm definitely learning. Um, and I've been in tons of uncomfortable situations in work where I've just had to, mm -hmm. I don't generally like the phrase uh, fake it till you make it, but sometimes you have to do that. And actually MDP, again, that was another advantage of being in a course where you're constantly put on the spot and asked to stand up to present uh, without much notice. And um, I was able to, I suppose, learn how to manage that in a professional way. So when I'm in situations where things go wrong all the time, that I'm able to think on my feet and, and get through it and um, use the phrase I hate, fake it till I make it. Um, <laughs> but it yeah. is, there is, there's, I mean, there's a lot to be said for being able to think on your feet. It's a key skill mm. that, uh, you know, even from a leadership perspective, it's something that people point to. Okay, yes. So when there's a crisis that you are the mm. person perhaps the people will turn to. So mm. um, exactly. a lot to, there's a lot to be said for being given that experience and, you know, oh, I suppose, also with education and educational environments, you know, you can come in, you can try things out and you can fail. Um, mm. Not so much in the workplace, so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not, not always anyway, but um, at least in, in a safe environment mm. with, with, where a master's in particularly smurf it, that we, we're allowed, we're creating that space for you to, to mm -hmm. grow, grow, so okay. excellent. Um, so we're, yeah, so the question again is, you know, obviously you've thought about coming up, coming to work, or sorry, to, to study here at smurf it, was it, but what, what surprised you about the program, uh, Eric? Was there anything you remember? Well, what did, yeah, so this is pleasantly surprised, not badly surprised, pleasantly uh, surprised. Yeah, so maybe not necessarily about the program, but um, okay. about uh, the whole experience. So what I didn't know at first, but what I quickly learned was that UCD is more than just university and the whole Smurfit experience is more than just studying. So I would say that I didn't experience that during my bachelor studies. So that's why I was maybe surprised about like like you said in a very positive way so there are just so many ways to get involved with smurfit um for example in societies and clubs um you can take on leadership roles as class rep or career rep you can arrange uh, night nights out or career events with your uh with your class and um the good thing was also that everyone at smurfit especially stuff I think encourage you to do that and mm -hmm. um, support you as best they can mm -hmm. and I would say that made it a really special experience for me and helped me like you also said to, to grow and not only academically but also personally. Very good so those yes absolutely as a person isn't it the, as we, we come to it with um, almost like a, a sense of what we're capable of a sense of our strengths but uh, with the experience of going through the masters it probably you know in some shape or fashion it, it forms you into uh, creating that story and understanding well, what are your strengths now coming out the other end you have a sense of it coming in but you pretty know what it is when you come out the other door mm. at the end of it so uh thanks eric that was that was very insightful and shabam what about yourself what uh, what surprised you about the smurfette experience well, I don't think I'm, I'm left to say much because <laughs> Rebecca and Erica mostly covered everything. But I mean, uh, ju just to continue from where, where Eric left, uh, UCD is, is one place where it's not just a university. It's really what you make out of it. Uh, the, the classroom teaching or your learning is not just limited to the classroom or the mm -hmm. program that you're part of. There is something happening at any moment across the campus. And it's it's about where do you want to apply yourself? Where do you want to you know try and try and understand something which you don't know about? That was that was a very very interesting uh, environment to be in personally for me. Okay, uh, Shubham. Then so on top of that, then an extension of that is well, what what uh, what would you point to as the highlight for you for this experience at Smurfit? I think uh, one one of the biggest highlights personally for me was uh, getting getting the first hand experience of working in multicultural groups. Mm -hmm. It's it's the perfect mm -hmm. replication of what real life work environments result into. There are going to be times when you work with someone you're not the biggest fans of, mm -hmm. and probably at the end of the day you wouldn't ask them to go out go out and have a pint with you. But at the 
I mean, where, where, where the buck stops is you still have to work with them. Mm. And in, in a very nice way, uh, Smurfit teaches you to do that. You are working with, with different people across, across the classroom, mm-hmm. uh, people you like, people you don't like. And the biggest thing is the groups keep changing. So you might get very comfortable working in a particular group. And then comes the next project when you ideally want to be in your comfort zone, work with the same same team where you know what the working equations are, but that's not reality. The reality is you move on and, and you, you learn again. So that personally was, it was a very, very, uh, you know, high point for me during my, my time in Smurfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, um, I suppose the things have come on a little bit um, with how we position people in terms of understanding that experience. And, you know, there are, there are extra curricular programs that you can take nowadays um, that will help you probably understand and tell that story better. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, it's, it's one of the distinguishing features of what Smurfit has to offer at the moment. This multicultural experience and cultural intelligences and how that can be, you know, applied, as you say, in the workplace. Because particularly with anybody who's interested in large multinationals nowadays, I mean, the people, you could be anywhere on the planet. Uh, literally, at the moment, you could be working from anywhere on the planet in these teams. Good. Eric, what, uh, what stands out in your memory as a take, you know, something that you would say, hey, you know what, that was a highlight for me. Yeah, I think I covered it at least to some extent in, my, in the previous question. Um, so I really enjoyed the supportive and encouraging um, culture at Smurfit. And I can also give you a concrete examples. So for example, during our um, um, study break in March 2019, we organized a study field trip to Belgium um, with site visits at various um, organizations such as Microsoft, uh, the European Commission, startups like Datacamp, and we got so much support from our um, program director, Alan, from our program manager, Nee. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Smurfit is all about. So if you ask for help, you will get help 100%. So. Very good. Great. Uh, <clears throat> so I suppose that's then, you know, the standout experiences for us. Um, in terms then of, you know, let's let's look beyond now the program and, and think about well, where, where it is we're at coming out the other side and looking at, you know, okay, yeah, I must, and many students will be in this situation. I actually have now to go about getting myself a job, all right? And, uh, you know, it comes to people early, some, and some comes to me, you know, in the middle of the program and others at the end of the program, which will have to play catch up. But I guess everybody's different, so it'll come to you at some point in time. Um, but when you're looking then at position yourself for a job, what do, what, so what did you can what can you point to from your Smurfit experience that helped you? Maybe careers related, or you know, what activity do you think helped you position yourself for the job that you're in? Rebecca, I'll uh, put that one to you. Okay, well, so loads of things. Um, I would say we did like um, and again, all the different all the courses are different um, with loads of I suppose different and, and varied benefits, but for us. We had, um, I think we had it for like two or three days. I can't even remember. We had a really big like presentation skills um, workshop. Um, and in that we were actually vi- recorded and we had to watch back. And it goes back to your point, Michael, around like being very self-aware. Mm-hmm. And for me as a marketeer, I actually have to be really comfortable uh, being a storyteller and being able to stand up in front of people or stand up in front of a screen or whatever it is or sit as I'm sitting now but be able to talk to large groups and to communicate whatever my brand or whatever my company is trying to communicate and communicate effectively and that presentation workshop I haven't had um, an interview where I haven't had to present so that would be a really big thing that I, I if you think back to my undergrad I studied law I never had to present I never had to stand up you know it was such a it was worlds apart so that would have been one thing um, I got my first job with Kerry Group through my um, manager in MDP. So the way MDP works is um, you have like a, a marketing director or whatever who's your boss and all 25 of you or however, there might be 40 of you, I can't even remember the number, in the class reporting to this, this guy or this girl. And she had left the course and a new um, director had come on and she had moved to Kerry Group. And she actually referred three of us into roles and all three of us got the jobs and one of them still works there named Shannon. She's actually moved to the States with Kerry Group um, and she's mm-hmm. in a marketing director role now. But uh, and myself and Elaine, another girl is now in Unilever. Um, mm-hmm. But we all got that job through Orla. 
And um, for me, I, and I've always linked back that there's a number of people within Smurford who I would have really strong relationships with still. And I got my next job through my job in Kerry Group. So I bring everything back to had I not started with Kerry Group, had I not had that, I suppose, referral through Orla, I wouldn't be where I am today. I'd be more successful. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> no, but I could be in a totally different, you know, I am so happy with how I am, where I am now. And it wouldn't have happened this way had I not done the MDP, had I not had the opportunity to learn these different skills and then have that relationship with Orla, which led into all these different situations, you know. Good. So we, yeah, so part of the, the way we position um, the networking piece within mm -hmm. careers development is, is crucial because particularly in today's environment where people are, you know, sitting at home, you know, working from home, uh, this idea of being able to network yourself into your next job is, is crucial and leveraging Murphy network has never been as important as it is today. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah so. I would completely agree with you there. And it doesn't matter, like the, the fact that it's global like that. A fr actually, a friend of mine who was in MDP with me, who I'm going to be her bridesmaid actually this summer, and I only met her in MDP, so another another highlight. But um, she's based over in uh, abroad, and she reached out to her, her a future employer um, mm. because they both had this perfect connection. And it's so strong. Like, you'd be so shocked wherever you are in the world, you'll find someone that has some connection to Smurf, and it's incredible. That's right. So the, yeah, the global network of uh, alumni chapters is very mm. significant, yeah. So Smurfit, of course, is part of that umbrella of UCD, as we all know. So it's uh, the possibility to be able to reach out to alumni in different locations as well, internationally. That's yeah, it is significant in this idea of trying to understand and leverage that network that once you get in, um, it's probably from day one. We bring in alumni right on the first day. So it's understanding how people can, you know, learn and then leverage that network. Yeah, very good. Um, Shubham, what do you, would you say that perhaps in terms of career related activities that you experienced during the program that might have helped you with your uh, career development so far? Well, uh, I think the biggest help was bringing my three page CV down to one page. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I, I don't know if, if Michael, you remember this, but I, I used to be a regular at the Cario's office with literally every every third day, I would get a new version of my CV and be like, does this look any better? <laughs> and I think I think the way you guys gave feedback on it, the way uh, it, it was actionable. So you knew exactly what needed to be changed, which most people cannot give you. They can say that this doesn't look right, but what is not right? gets into a different chapter altogether. So that uh, by far was was one of the biggest highlights for me where where mm -hmm. a, a three-page junky CV could be reduced to a one-page structured CV. And uh, the number of times uh, I have I have received help in terms of, you know, interview preps, connecting with some someone on LinkedIn or just just give, giving me an introduction uh, to, you know, no, another potential employer mm. that's brilliant i mean uh for just just because just because rebecca mentioned about carry group right now right now i'm working with carry group and uh i literally connected with someone on linkedin just based out, out of the fact that we both went to smurfit mm. and that became my entry point into the company and now i'm, I'm having conversations with them so the power of alumni from smurfit is immense and yeah that that's one thing you should definitely leverage going forward very good uh, once you got your cv sorted of course yes that's right. <laughs> uh, so yeah it's it's again i suppose as i started out by telling or explaining about that um the career i suppose the professional development program it's it's the third stage it's understanding how to tell your write your story you know write your story and then of course the premise would be if you can write your story clearly you can then communicate it and tell it to others so that they understand what your proposition is from a marketing perspective of course um so yes the service at careers in here in smurfit is kind of twofold i think i've already explained there's the the, the high tech which is um, using the tools that we have so things like vmock and these um, analytics tools that will help you you know understand how to create a modern day business cv but then, of course, there's the high touch piece, which is being able to come in and, uh, well, at the moment, virtually online, set up appointments 
to finalize, you know, well, what it is it about tailoring my CV so it's, you know, well laid out and well structured for that position that I'm trying to apply for. So it's, uh, yes, it is, it is a significant piece of trying to get a job. Eric, I will turn to you then. Was there any careers related activity that you could point to that has helped you where you were today? Yeah, I can only agree with what uh, Shubham said. So what helped me probably the most were the one-to-one -one sessions with our career experts. And um, they not only check your CV or your LinkedIn profile, they also give you val valuable career advice um, in general. And in my case, we like develop kind of a strategy on when to apply, uh, where to apply, which industries or jobs best suit my profile. Um, and yeah, it's definitely highly recommended to make use of this. Very good. Yes, and uh, you know, the, the discussions we have um, in the career service, when you come to us, you know, they're usually only about 30 minutes uh, at a time. So how to maximize those conversations uh, is, is key. And those are the types of key strategic career development uh, conversations are probably what you know is makes it enjoyable for us but makes it impactful for you guys as well so uh, yeah it's good to hear that too um now actually we've, we've got a few questions coming in from our audience i'd uh, throw one actually one for you eric you're not off the hook there yet <laughs> uh, so this this uh, person who is interested in smurfit they want to ask the question about being a german right so german too wondering how possible employers in germany reacted to your Smurfit qualification? And uh, was there anything about UCD and its reputation or as an advantage? Was there anything you can talk about there? Yeah, so when I think back to the application uh, process, um, I think um, recruiters were always very curious about my degree and my time abroad. So that definitely opened uh, the door to some very interesting job opportunities. Um, definitely they know about UCD. so. I think their UCD is in all the rent, uh, rankings, they're re well re reputed, high ranked, so they definitely know about UCD. So um, that's that's a big, uh, big advantage. Of course. Yes, the, um, <clears throat> we would be the only uh, business school in Ireland as well that would have the SEMS program. So this is the International Management Program. And again, a lot of the German uh, employers, corporate particularly, would, would know that program too. So the reputation of the rankings and SEMS, you know, it helps the brand. So we're talking about brand awareness, and yes, UCD brand awareness in Germany would would be would be fairly good. I know that um, just speaking to, for example, to Amazon only earlier this week, uh, we are well. Sorry, our students, not we. I'm I'm in a job. Our students are very welcome to apply to Amazon in Germany in particular. So the, the good good brand at the moment in Germany. Yes. So that hopefully answers that question. Um, so question here, just a general question about. You know, how easy was it to find job offers after a master's? Uh, how do you position yourselves compared to people, let's say maybe from undergraduate? Was there any benefit, do you think, of doing the master's? How would that? Uh, Shabam, do you, would you, you've come all the way from India, so you must have some sense of what a, a master's has added to your job prospects. Sure, thank you. Uh, well, it definitely adds, adds a significant amount of value as compared to an undergrad. Uh, number one, they know you're, you're qualified enough to go through a rigorous program of master's degree and get one. So that, that ticks the first box off that. Are you hardworking? Yes. Are you smart enough to do a program or work with us? Yes. Uh, so that, that is, is fundamental in, in uh, your application process. And second, you just stand out further out than someone who's just done an undergrad degree, like undergrad, master's, doctorate. So simple. Uh, I, I hope that answers, answers the question. I'm not sure. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, Rebecca, would you have anything to add to that? Um, I don't I, I hope this doesn't come across as harsh now, but um, I would think a lot of the people applying for, for jobs that say are applying for jobs that, that I have worked in previously or that, that I'm in now, the majority of them tend to have a master's degree. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and actually, it's, now there's almost this next expectation as to well, what makes you different from the other people who have master's yes. uh, behind them as well. And that's actually your personality and, and how you apply yourself to the role and all that sort of stuff and, and, and a lot of things that Shadam just touched on. So for me, it's almost a necessity um, to, to have that next level because it is a competitive space mm -hmm. um, and I think it's almost like the tick behind 
all the other things when you come to an interview it is almost like checklist you know and um, that'll be my take on it very good eric masters Germany. yeah I agree what, uh, with what uh, Rebecca said. So um, it's often a requirement to, to have a master's degree. So um, otherwise you won't be able to, to apply in the first place. So um, it is a criteria nowadays. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is yes. uh, and I suppose just to add it, I, what I have seen then over the years as well, and or let's say feedback from employers would be that in general, the Smurfit student has gone through a rigor rigorous application process. So there's, a, there's a, almost like a, a, a quality that's already guaranteed uh, from, the, from the employer's perspective. When they see, oh yeah, the brand of Smurfit, they know the quality of the student is coming through. Mm. Uh, would be one thing that I know, and I could name of quite a number of large employers in the city centre who would say that to me and have no problems in saying that to me. The second thing I, I recall specifically about doing a master's, particularly at Smurfit, is that the, the skills, and I think we've all pointed to this um, in some shape or form here this afternoon, but the, the skills that not just about the, 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 you know, the, the content, the knowledge, you know, if you're doing masters in accounting or whatever, you, you, you have to, or finance or quantitative finance, whatever the hell that is, you know, it's not just about the knowledge, but it's about the skills that you come out with the other side. So I point to things like, you know, being able to communicate, you know, the, the, and I think Rebecca, you mentioned earlier on about, you know, that presentation, being able to stand up and, and present yourself and come across well. Uh, I think doing a master's at Smurfit, those, those skills kind of align with a sense of confidence. You know, you build a confidence as well that undergraduates particularly would not have, uh, not have that uh, experience. Um, then the last thing I will say as well, and something that's more recent in our, in our um, development as a school, I'd point to our uh, intercultural um, development program all right so um we have with with uh, linda yang you know this this uh, intercultural um program where our students can understand and i don't know if you guys got through that eric was that after you or um the intercultural development program yeah we, i think yeah it was after us i think yeah, we, after you. we did have have a, a seminar a couple of seminars on intercultural development and uh, intelligence intelligence but so that, that, that was probably a pilot. So thank you for uh, being a <laughs> successful pilot. Uh, so this intercultural competence uh, program uh, is, is quite a bit, is, is all over, is this year coming, will be uh, rolled out to every student in the school. And the point of this program, again, is going back to Shabam, what you said earlier, it's being able to understand this international experience, uh, being able to reflect on it and internalize it, and then being able to communicate potential employers in, in particular, you know, how this experience has made me, you know, a better, a better proposition in the market today. So uh, that's just one element of the intercultural uh, competence program. So uh, this, is, this is a new offering for every student in the school, and we're delighted to see that this will, will be available to all and everybody that comes on board next year. Just a few final questions very quickly. Uh, so, uh, one for you, Shubham. How challenging is it for Indians or non-EU to secure a job in Ireland at the moment? That's because, I mean, we could talk about history, but it's, let's probably keep it at the moment. Well, I think, I think uh, it, it's just as difficult as it, for, as it is for anyone else. Uh, because today, if, if there's one job application or, or one job opportunity open, there are, there are 50 people who are applying for it. So regardless of uh, where you come from, it's the difficulty does become a, a major constraint. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, from what I realized, uh, you know, the best person suited for the job gets it, regardless of where you are from, because there are provisions in, in the Irish law to hire people outside of EU if you are the best suited. So that's how it stands. Right. And I suppose in, and I suppose this will apply to everybody, regardless of where you're from. At the moment, the market, you know, it does require people who are job searching to have a certain level of resilience. I mean, it is, it is what it is. And, uh, but those who are dedicated, those who persevere, you know, they, they are being hired. And, uh, and I'm talking about alumni because obviously I'm connected to a few people on LinkedIn. I can see them moving, you know, from role to role, uh, but also our own st current students uh, come to us significantly since I suppose uh, the end of, actually from about De November, December, and now January, Feb. Uh, quite a number coming to us for interview prep, 
So there is movement in the market again. And that is that is great to see. Um, the other point I would make is that uh, we ran, <clears throat> sorry, literally yesterday, we had our spring fair, which is, uh, you know, a bunch of employers coming on, well, used to be coming on campus, uh, now online to recruit our students. And we had uh, 35 companies yesterday, uh, up from 23 about this time last year. All right. So um, that just to show that the market is already beginning to respond. Uh, and we've had, you know, surveys recently as well that you'll see published perhaps in the, in the national newspapers that employers are, uh, you know, they're hedging their bets, waiting to see how the, the summer will come uh, in terms of the, the vaccine being rolled out. But there is data there to, to show that employers will be hiring again. So I think um, it's, it's, it's promising. It definitely is much more promising at the moment than it has been for quite a, quite a number of months, right? Uh, so uh, last question, because I think our, our job is about, oh, sorry, our time is about to run out. Uh, what about, and I, I know Eric, it probably this might be for you. So it, does moving back home to your home country after the masters make sense? I don't know. So I also considered staying in Dublin. So yeah. it was probably just my gut feeling to go to to go back to Germany. So um, I would say also staying in Dublin makes a lot of sense. So I think uh, 19 out of the 20 biggest uh, tech companies are based in Dublin. There are so many job opportunities. So um, the the MSC from 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 Smurfit is. Um, such a valuable diploma so it also makes a lot of sense to stay um, in Ireland I would say so probably depends on, on the person and the uh, future plans so um, yes. so that's more of a personal question I don't, and I think that's that's probably why I, I gave it to you because I was just wondering there about well okay you you're the person who did move home so mm -hmm. how long after doing the masters did you move home did you move home straight away or yeah uh, straight away so um in september yeah after after my studies okay. so we would have you know because smurfit is very as we've already pointed out a number of times here very international and we have people who stay and we have people who go home and um there is no real distinction i, I would say yeah uh, i agree i wouldn't say there's much of a distinction i think unfortunately we've run out of time uh for, there might have been one or two more questions there but i'm sure our admissions team who are very busy today will answer whatever questions that are left uh I thank my uh, colleagues here, my uh, alumni friends, Shubham, Rebecca, and Eric for a wonderful conversation. And thank you for being so frank with us. Um, we're, we're here to try and, you know, not necessarily, you know, say why Smurfit is the best or, you know, it's not necessarily the point. The point is, well, what was your experience? And if people take from what they can, and uh, of course I'm going to say it's the best, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it is the best, it's the best. It is the best. <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.